waterfalls with my friend Jesse. This is a very small plane. Wide shot. Quick change up. Headed back down to the reception now. Okay, we are going to eat. I haven't had food since yesterday. So I'm pretty excited. We have this best friend thing yesterday. I didn't eat any food. Today he hasn't eaten any food. My pizza has a bicep, that big on his right arm, and his left arm bicep is like a noodle. Yeah. It's, like a, it's like a pencil cram. I don't know, does it bother you that I ride a booster board? No, but can you plug that into the charger when you're done with it? Yeah. This was the intro from Peter McKinnon's 1 million subscriber special. And maybe you're thinking, so what? There's loads of channels that have more than a million subscribers. Well, the reason it's interesting is because this was only his 107th video, and he already had 1 million subscribers by this point. For reference, it took MrBeast over 740 videos to reach 1 million subscribers. Maybe 107 videos seems like a lot, but it's really not that bad when you realize that after 1 million subscribers, you're able to consider YouTube is now your full-time job. And what could be better than that? Being a full-time YouTuber is essentially like saying, I get money to do whatever I like, and then YouTube pays me to make videos about it. And if all you had to do was make 100 videos and you were guaranteed to be a full-time YouTuber, that's pretty class. So what did Peter do to grow his channel so quickly to the point where he was able to completely quit his job and work entirely for himself in under a year? Oh yeah, it didn't even take him a full year to reach 1 million subscribers. After watching Peter for the last couple of years, I decided to actually sit down and study his channel to understand how he was able to grow his channel so fast. And I've identified two things that have helped Peter grow his channel so quickly that anyone could replicate and grow their own channel. So let's get straight into factor number one behind Peter's success. Peter solves a problem for the viewer. A lot of channels that really struggle to grow on YouTube are the ones that are in the genre of entertainment. Entertainment videos are the best way to get the most views per video, but they're also the most difficult videos to make. Nowadays, people are more aware of the negative effects of spending large amounts of their time on social media than ever before. There's even a feature on the YouTube app where you can set screen time limits, where YouTube will notify you when you're spending too much time on the app and ask you to take a break. YouTube wouldn't do this if people didn't want it. So clearly people are struggling with spending more time than they would like on YouTube. This is why you have to really make it worthwhile for people to click your videos. And this is actually where Peter got his first taste of success on YouTube. He made a video called 8 Camera Hacks in 90 Seconds, which would make you think, oh cool, this is interesting. But also, oh I could actually learn something new from this video that could help me. And Peter also struck gold with his Premiere Pro and Photoshop tutorials. Tutorial videos like these not only have the chance of doing well on the browse page of YouTube, but also their ability to show up in search when people search that term. The amount of time someone searches YouTube to learn how to do something has to be in the billions every day. So if you can create an entertaining and informative how-to video, not only will you get views from the recommended page, but you'll also continue to get views for years to come when people are searching that term so if you can create an entertaining and informative how-to video, not only will you get views from the recommended page, but you will continue to get views for years to come from people searching that term on YouTube. Even YouTube recommends that you make how-to videos to get more views. If you can give people an entertaining video that they can also learn from, people will be able to justify clicking on your video even more, even if they're feeling like maybe they're spending too much time on YouTube. Entertainment videos will always get more views than more education-based videos. But if you're just starting out and you want to grow quickly, aiming for search is one of the fastest and easiest ways to grow your channel because these videos are easier to make and you can make them way quicker. These videos also don't have to be as good as the entertainment videos because people will watch them for the information even if the video isn't as well produced and isn't as entertaining. And you can clearly see which of Peter's early videos got the most views. You don't even need to be good at anything to do one of these channels. You can easily convert a Wikipedia page, a book, or anything like this into a video essay. There's so many books I haven't been bothered to read, so I just stick on someone summarizing the book on YouTube. I just absolutely churn through those videos where someone talks about some famous person's life. I've seen countless videos on YouTube where they told a life story or a random fact about a company and then searched the same thing on Google and realized all this person did was summarize a Wikipedia page. I'm not saying this to be dismissive of anyone because I do enjoy these videos a lot and I'd rather watch the video than read the Wikipedia page. There's also a clear difference between a good summary and a bad summary. But my point is, if you're willing to do some research for topics that people will be interested in, it's possible to find interesting information and convert it into a good video essay. It still requires a good bit of effort to write the information in a nice coherent story, do the voiceover, find and edit good stock footage, and make a good title and thumbnail. We all want to grow our YouTube channels really fast. So what does Peter McKinnon, Dream, and Matthew Beam all have in common besides being some of the fastest growing channels on YouTube in the last few years? They all have 
a talent they leveraged to blow up their channels. Dream was able to code, so he was able to make these never before seen Minecraft worlds. Matthew Beam worked painting cars for a living, so he decided to paint custom cars for super famous YouTubers. And Peter worked in a camera shop where they would let him take home cameras and other gear to work with. He learned so much about photography and videography here. So when it came time to make YouTube videos, he was good at making videos and had something he could make informative videos about when it was time to post on YouTube. If all you want to do is work on YouTube, you can get a job working with YouTubers by using this new website, youtubejobs.co. There's lots of different jobs here ranging from small creators to big creators. So there's surely something you can do if you're really interested in YouTube. You can also set up a dropshipping store and make tutorials or videos about how your dropshipping experience was. This is basically what Biaza and Jordan Welch based a lot of their early YouTube success on. I know it's not easy, but if it's something you really want to do, you have to put in some time because if it was easy, everyone would just make a successful YouTube channel in a month. Whatever job you have, you can make tutorial videos about how to do better in that job. While you're making these tutorial videos, you're just getting better at talking to the camera, talking to a mic, scripting out videos, planning videos. So then eventually, if you want to move into more mainstream YouTube videos, it's a lot easier that way because you already have the foundation and skills. Maybe you don't want to make how-to and educational content for YouTube, and that's fine. I just thought it was interesting to know that there's more than one way to grow your channel on YouTube. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. 